the thing that really captures my attention with most of these stories is when I look at them and I'm saying, how avoidable are these things? Have we talked about them before? And what was the cause of this happening? Even if they don't want to tell us exactly what happened in the news and the details, police or court hearing or whatever it is, then I tend to speculate quite a bit because I've seen this happen dozens and dozens of times and it seems to follow a certain narrative. But before we get into the details, talking about him, let me give you a disclaimer if this is your first time here. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. I'm just curious to know. I'm getting this story from lawandcrime.com. Thank you so much for the article. I got a lot of pictures. Y'all, please take a look at these pictures. Let me talk about something real quick before we get into this. How many of you guys, this is your first time watching my content, your first time ever being here? Because I'm going to say some things that might trigger you a little bit. You might be thinking like, damn, like why would he say that? But I'm going to be so, so for real that I have years and years and years and hundreds of stories, millions of views. Uh-oh, sorry, we got a little stuck there. That looked weird. But we have hundreds of stories, if not thousands of stories, millions of views. These stories and my videos and my commentary has been seen worldwide. And I continue to say these things because they seem to ring true and I have not been proven wrong yet. This thing here. I don't believe that men under the age of 30 years old should be fathers. They shouldn't be stepfathers. They shouldn't be around your kids. As a matter of fact, ladies, if y'all have kids already, if you've chosen to go down the right of having, having children outside of wedlock and you've got kids, I'm telling you to take care of the kids that you have. They are alive and well. Take care of the kids that you have. Stop bringing random dick around your kids, right? I know my thoughts might be a little antiquated when it comes to how women are producing children, but I still believe that if you're going to go that route, you still have to do what is best by the children and not what is best for your personal needs. Just because you have a, a personal need for some random dick from time to time, some young dick from time to time, some young thug from time to time. Don't mean that you need to bring your kids around these characters. I almost used the word that I was going to get flagged for. Mm -hmm. Caught myself. These thug lions, these young thug lions should never meet your children. Please tell me, what is the purpose of having a man under the age of 30 years old? Not only be a father, but be around your kids for what? What's the point of your boyfriend being around your kids? Oh, well, he could babysit. How many stories? Y'all tell him. Please tell him in the chat. Somebody leave a comment and tell me. How many times have I done stories and told y'all hard-headed ass, think y'all know it at all ass women, to stop bringing these little nigglets, these little, these little thug lions, and having y'all baby having y'all kids be babysit by these fools who don't even know how to take care of themselves. They are not productive members of society. The majority of them don't have jobs. They have never, they have never seen a father, so they don't know how to behave as a father, right? What makes you think just because you like having sex with this man that it's going to make him a good father? I'm not just talking about him. I'm talking about all of them on my channel, all the boyfriend, hashtag all the boyfriends shouldn't meet your kids. Case in point, a 20 year old man in Florida, Florida, y'all taking the L again, has been arrested for allegedly killing his girlfriend's 23 month old son, beating the boy to death while babysitting and then trying to blame the fatal injuries on the couple's little puppy. 
So this man beat the dog, no pun intended, crap out of this baby and blamed it on a puppy. Said the puppy beat the baby to death. Isn't that something? That's got to be a new one. Y'all see this baby in the hospital was clinging to life. It's just really sad to see that. Bobby Frank Curry Jr. was taken into custody. That's mom's boyfriend, a little thug, thug, thug ass boyfriend. I, I keep trying to not cuss, so I'm stuttering. Sorry. Was taken into custody last week and charged with one count of first degree murder and one count of aggravated child abuse in a brutal slaying of young Ezekiel Cotto St. Fleur. Ezekiel, I love that name. That's a Bible name. So I love the fact that the mother at least gave this child a name that meant something. Lakeland Police Department Chief Sam Taylor on Monday said he believed that Curry was inexperienced with dealing with children and grew frustrated with the victim. Get the fuck out of here. You serious? He's unexper he's inexperienced at 20, 20 years old? Really? You think? <clears throat> I wouldn't have trusted this man to watch the dog, let alone my two-year-old child. But it gets worse. Can we get a hashtag, another bathtub story? Are y'all ready for this? Oh, 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 yeah, we're going to go there. We're going to go there. Another bathtub story. You're about to hear it. He grew frustrated with this victim. The child is two years old. Like, who doesn't get frustrated with kids? But guess what? All of us who get frustrated with kids, everybody does. We don't murder them, right? They quote, I will tell you, I suspect that Curry was overwhelmed. He was probably unused to babysitting a 23-month-old, Taylor said. I believe that he was frustrated. The chief also said that Curry waited more than two hours before seeking medical attention for Ezekiel. That's a whole nother story. Bookmark that. We'll come back to it. Let's talk about this term, babysitting. You know what's funny about these women, and it's not all women. I know I got some awesome women in my chat. Shout out to the AFC. Shout out to the good women, the good mothers out there. If you're a good mother, then share this video. Hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment and let me know that you're a good mother, please. Put your hand up. Good mother right here. And let me know you wouldn't behave like this. You wouldn't choose a man like this, right? But there are a lot of women like this mother, which is why she refused to get up and do an interview. Everybody else in the family did, but the mom didn't. She was so traumatized and she didn't want to do no interview, y'all. She was so traumatized. But everybody else was speaking up for her, right? How is it? And y'all tell me if I'm wrong, fellas. Y'all tell me if I'm wrong, because maybe some of y'all fellas have been through this with y'all baby mama. Look, I'm not going to tell on myself, but maybe some of y'all fellas have. How many of y'all have been through hell and high water to see your children just because the mom wanted to be an ass and not let you see your kid? But mom's boyfriend, who's dicking her down every night, get to see your kid all day and all night and ain't paid a dime in child support. How many of you brothers can say that y'all been through that? They would make you seem like a deadbeat. You don't care. Won't give you a chance. No, they, they won't let you babysit. Even though the biological father wouldn't murder the child. Not saying they never have. More times than the statistics tell us that biological fathers are not going to just flat out just murder their kids. That's not going to happen. You won't let that man babysit. You'll make him go through all type of BS. But boyfriend, oh, he gets to see your kid naked in the tub all day long as much as he wants to while you off at work and don't know what the hell they doing. As a matter of fact, you'd also have to think, how would he have so much time to babysit if he had a goddamn job? Huh, Freddie? Do you think he had a jobby, Freddie? We're going to keep our fingers crossed. Do you think he had a jobby? We're going to keep our fingers crossed. 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 Shout out to Freddie Got Fingered. That's one of my favorite movies. 
If y'all watch that movie, you'll know exactly why I said that. I, that's one of my favorite quotes. It's funny. It's stupid. But I like it. Do y'all really think he had a job if he had time to babysit? No. That means both of these young people should have been working at 20 and 23 years old. That's all y'all should be doing at 23 and 20 years old. Working, maybe partying, trying to build a foundation, going to school, no kids. That's what you should be doing. Not sitting here playing daddy just because you want to get some ass later on. That's all he's trying to do. Like, he don't want nothing to do with this kid. He don't want to be a father. He don't want to be a stand-up guy. He don't want to do none of that. He just want to smell some dirty pennies when, 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 when the mama get home. <laughs> so she can go flailing her STD-written coochie around. Anyway, <laughs> check it out. Let's keep going before I get flagged. This man waited two hours, and I'm sorry, this man waited two hours before calling 911, and y'all are not going to believe this. It's unconscionable and unfathomable, unfathomable, can barely say that word, for almost two and a half hours to go by from the first signs of Ezekiel was injured until Curry decided to call 911. According to police at around 5.25 p.m. on March the 5th, responded to a home on the Kansas Avenue in Lakeland regarding an unresponsive child. Upon arriving at the scene, first responders said that they found Ezekiel lying on the floor in the bathroom and he was not breathing and had no discernible pulse. That's a big word, too. Police performed life-saving procedures until, medical, uh, until emergency medical personnel with the Lakeland Fire Department arrived and took over. Ezekiel was transported to Lakeland Regional Health Medical Center for treatment, and due to the severity of the toddler's injuries, allegedly from a dog, from a puppy, he was then transported to Tampa General Hospital, where he was admitted in critical condition. Ezekiel succumbed to his injuries that the dog gave him, allegedly, and was pronounced dead on March the 8th. In an interview with police, Curry, the boyfriend, allegedly said that he was babysitting Ezekiel while his girlfriend, the boy's mother, was at work on March 5th. Curry and the mother had been dating for approximately four months and had moved in together in February of 2024. That is a whole nother discussion. They moved in together. What do y'all want to bet? Because mom had the kid. Mom is probably on some type of assistance support that's taking care of her place to live because a lot of these mothers out here need help financially taking care of kids, right? And this man, having nothing built up for himself, found it easier to just get a copy of the key from her, put his little mat game down, and go stay and kick his feet up on her couch every day. In four months, you caused your child to be in this situation because you fell into lust in four months. L-U-S-T, if y'all have never heard that word before, I'm kind of old school, lust. In an interview with police, he said he was babysitting while the mom was at work. They moved in after, after being in a relationship for four months. And they moved in in February. Per Taylor, Curry told investigators that he was giving Ezekiel a bath. So 20 years old, he don't know nothing about being a parent, and he's taking your little boy's clothes off naked and putting him in a tub while you're not at home to supervise, ladies. And y'all wonder why these kids keep getting molested? Whether y'all know it or not, the level, the number of molestations between girls and boys, little girls and little boys, is damn near equal. There are just as many little boys that are being molested in our country as there are little girls. <coughs> P. Diddy. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. There's a lot of men out here that like little boys. I'm just saying. Just throwing that out there. 
he was giving him a bath at 2 or 3 p.m. that afternoon because the boy had wet himself. When Ezekiel got out of the baths, Curry allegedly said that one of the two puppies in the house, one of two puppies, why they got two puppies, in the house came into the bathroom and jumped on the toddler, causing him to fall backward and hit his head on the bathtub and the bathroom floor. Now, for those who have never been to my channel before and y'all are wondering why is Jay saying and why are people in the chat typing another bathtub story? Believe it or not, We've had a lot of stories where these children are beaten to death. Then the person who beat them to death gives this cocker mamie ass story and say that the child slipped, hit their head in the tub, drowned and died. And we've been doing these stories. I'd say I first started hearing about this about four years ago and four years consistently. We keep having stories that involve dead children and the person somehow whips up the story about the child falling in the tub and dying. That's why we say another bathtub story. And that's allegedly because that's what the, the boyfriend's saying. He's saying the dog came in, caused the child to fall and hit his head on the bathroom floor, on the tub, in the bathtub. He said the toddler tensed up but was breathing when he laid him down in the bed. A few day, a few minutes later, at around 3.15 p.m., Curry said he went to check on 3.15 in the, in the middle of the day. That means this boy didn't have no damn job. 3.15 p.m., he said he went to check on Ezekiel and saw that the toddler had stopped breathing. Curry performed CPR, which led Ezekiel to start breathing again. Between 3.15 and 5.25 p.m., notate that time frame, Curry and Ezekiel's mother exchanged a total of 67 text messages on Instagram. Not cell phone, which would be quicker. They exchanged 67 messages on Instagram about the child's condition before the mother finally, keep in mind, before the mother finally told him to call 911. So if y'all wanted to know at what point did Jay want to talk about this story outside of everything I've already discussed, that part. That's the part that really captured my attention and that's the part that made this our featured story. Because I said, how stupid does a parent have to be to know that something is going wrong with your child and you continue to exchange message after 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 message until you get the 67 messages and then you say, hmm, hmm. You know what I think you probably should do, Mr. Thug Lion Boyfriend? You know what I think you should do? I think you should maybe, it's just a thought, it's just a thought. You might call 911 because it sounds like something might be wrong with my freaking kid, man. Two and a half hours 67 messages later, and on top of that, what do y'all want to bet that that mother probably finished her work shift before she ever even came to check on the well-being and life of her son? So let's just throw all of this other BS out the window, and let's just say you didn't know none of this was going on. You're in this situation. Boom. So let's just put a lot of these women who make these stupid decisions in this little boat right here. Here's your scenario. Boom. You're here. You get a text message and he's like, hey, something's wrong with your son. In my mind as a parent, as a father, but as a parent, I'm thinking I'm dropping everything. What's wrong with my kid? I'm on my way. I only known you for four months. I don't know you that well. I don't know you to be a good parent. I don't know that you even have any kids or, or, or what your background is. I'm coming to get my kid. I might have made a mistake. The first inkling, the first thought and idea 
that something is wrong with my kid. I'm leaving work. I'm quitting work. I'm giving everybody in there the middle finger. Screw you guys, like Cartman says, and I'm going home to get my kid. Did mom do that? Hell no. Two and a half hours? No, she didn't. 67 messages later? No, she didn't. Didn't have the, 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 the wherewithal, didn't have the presence of mind to call 911 yourself and then be on your way. Didn't have the presence of mind to call your family members. These, these ladies, I'm going to let y'all see the interview here in just a second. These ladies that came out and spoke on the mom's behalf and talked about how traumatized they are, y'all. The baby dead, y'all. They all sad, y'all. But she didn't call them to come by and come pick up her son, come check on him. She didn't think to have them who might be more responsible people to babysit this kid. Let alone the fact that you have a job, you have employment, and you didn't have money for a proper babysitter. The stuff I'm drinking on is called Rain Storm. It's clean energy. I'm drinking on guava strawberry. And guess what? It's got my mind right tonight. You can find that at Walmart, by the way. It's good stuff. None of that came to her thoughts at all. And guess what? We still got more of this dumbass story to tell. He asked the mother, is it possible for the child to go into cardiac arrest? Curry asked in one of the messages. Investigator said that the child's injuries, and this is why I believe that the mother deserves to be locked up and arrested also. I think the mother deserves at least half as much time in prison as he's going to get. Okay? Want to throw that out there. Mom needs to be arrested. That's my word. Investigator said the child's injuries and timeline provided by Curry, the boyfriend, were both undercut by the extent of Ezekiel's injuries. So none of it made any sense. We're going to talk about that. Go fund me also. We spoke to medical doctors to, who treated Ezekiel at Lakeland Regional Health and Tampa General Hospital. They conversed in, with the uh, state's attorney's office and the medical professionals that Ezekiel was without oxygen for at least 45 minutes and suffered a brain bleed, which is probably from blunt force trauma. A subsequent autopsy determined that Ezekiel's cause of death was blunt force injuries. To the front and top of the head and manner of death was a homicide. This child was murdered. There's absolutely no reason. I get that he's probably overwhelmed. There's at least two puppies in the house. He's only 20 years old. I get all of that. But common sense will tell you, and just being a human being will tell you, if another human is in distress, you pick up the phone. Curry is currently being held in Polk County Jail without bond. He's scheduled to appear in court on April 16th for his arraignment, so we'll follow that part. A GoFundMe from Ezekiel's family can be found, and we'll show you guys that GoFundMe if y'all want to see this. GoFundMe if y'all want to support it and throw your dollars down the drain and just piss them away like a, I don't know. Like you just drank a gallon of water, then feel free. Help us lay Ezekiel to rest. They're asking for $10,000. Jenna Rivera is the organizer on behalf of the mother, Diana Rivera. But there was something that caught my attention, and I will show you guys this on the screen. Let me bust this up on the screen real quick. But I've always told you guys I'm not against people using GoFundMe if they need it, but I just believe in life insurance. Get life insurance, okay? This GoFundMe created, and she says on the second line, and I'm going to read this. It says, on March the 9th, 2024, Ezekiel's life was cut short under circumstances that have left our family completely shattered, seeking answers. While in the care of a babysitter, he was found unresponsive. In the care of a babysitter, or was this child in the care of mom's boyfriend? He's not a babysitter. He's not qualified. He's not anything nothing about that says that he should be watching any kids let alone dogs 
He shouldn't be watching any anything that's living and breathing. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Now do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up and share this video and share this story. If we were ever going to go viral off a story, I think this one would encompass Everything that we've been talking about, I guess almost in like six years now, it's not even five years anymore. Stories like these, I think, need to be absolutely viral. It's vital. It can save lives. But I just think, uh-oh, sorry, guys, a little stuck there. I think that these stories are vital. I think that they could save lives. And I believe that if we had more of these stories going viral, uh-oh, sorry, I'm getting stuck here. If more of these stories will go viral, I really think that we could save more children's lives. So do me a favor, hit that thumbs up and share these stories, okay? Let's try to get through these. We begin tonight only on 10 Tampa Bay, a Lakeland mother heartbroken over the loss of her child. This is Night Tide. I'm Dave Wagner. And I'm Carolina Lead. Lakeland police made an arrest in 23-month-old Ezekiel Coto San Fleur's death. They say the person responsible is his mom's boyfriend. 10 Tampa Bay's Angelina Salcido spoke to her hours ago. The pain over the loss of her son still fresh. This has to be all a mistake. Hard to understand. I don't want to believe that my baby was her. I don't, I don't want any type of thought like that in my mind. Even harder to accept. <laughs> Why did it happen to my baby? This 22-year-old mother shares her pain for the first time. Too emotional to show her face, she says 23-month-old Ezekiel was her sweet boy. The most beautiful hair and skin, and he was just so nice and cuddly. She and her boyfriend only shared this place for two weeks before Ezekiel was hurt March 5th. I was at work, and I started getting a whole bunch of text messages. Um, saying that there was something wrong and that they didn't know what to do. She says when she got there, Lakeland police had the road blocked and wouldn't let her see her son. They were still asking me some questions and then they told me I need to rush to the hospital. Ezekiel's mom tells me her baby was taken here to Lakeland Regional Hospital, but didn't stay long. He was life flighted here to Tampa General Hospital, but it was only a few days before the baby passed away. Ezekiel was without oxygen for at least 45 minutes and suffered a brain bleed. Chief Sammy Taylor says the medical examiner determined Ezekiel's injuries were consistent with child abuse. They didn't line up with her boyfriend's story. Stepped away for a second. The dog kind of jumped on him a little bit and knocked him over and he hit his head on the tub on the floor. The cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma and the manner of death was determined by the medical examiner to be a homicide. Lakeland PD says the man accused of taking the baby's life is 20-year-old Bobby Curry Jr. He's being held without bond for first-degree murder and child abuse. Do you fault him? I don't want to blame anybody for this. I truly want to believe that this was just an accident. It's just, I just feel so heartbroken and confused about everything. I don't... I don't know what to think at the moment. In Lakeland, Angelina Salcido, 10 Tampa Bay. Curry made his first appearance in court on Saturday, a day after his arrest. The family is doing all they can to pay for medical bills and give Ezekiel a proper burial. If you'd like to support them, we do have a link to their GoFundMe on our web. We begin tonight only on 10 Tampa Bay, a Lakeland mother heartbroken over the loss of her child. This is Night Tide. I'm Dave Wagner. And I'm Carolina Lead. Lakeland police made an arrest. A Lakeland man is now facing charges for allegedly killing a 23-month-old child. Police say Bobby Curry Jr. was babysitting his girlfriend's son and waited two hours to call 911 when the child started to show signs of distress. We are so glad you're with us here on 10 Tampa Bay at 5 o'clock. I'm Carolina Lead in tonight for Courtney Robinson. And I'm Frank Wiley. In that time period, police say dozens of Instagram messages were exchanged between Curry and the baby's mother. 10 Tampa Bay's Malik Rankin has been following this investigation. And Malik, today the chief said the baby's injuries and the story they got are not lining up. That's right. The 23-month-old who died, his name is Ezekiel Koto St. Floor. Today, the Lakeland police chief told us Bobby Curry Jr. told investigators the child was injured because a puppy jumped up on him, pushing him backwards. Those injuries do 
not match up with the medical examiner's findings. The injuries were not consistent with an injury or a fall, and the cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma and the manner of death was determined by the medical examiner to be a homicide. Lakeland Police Chief Sam Taylor says 20-year-old Curry Jr. was watching the child on March 5th while the child's mom was at work. He uh, either used something or uh, pushed the child, did something to the child to cause injuries to the front top portion to the extent that he had uh, some fatal injuries to the top of his head. Three days later, little Ezekiel did not survive his injuries. A Lakeland man is now facing charges for allegedly killing a 23-month-old child. Police say Bobby Curry Jr. was babysitting his girlfriend's son and waited two hours to call 911 when the child started to show signs of distress. We are so glad you're with us here on 10 Tampa Bay at 5 o'clock. I'm Carolina Lead in tonight for Courtney Robinson. And I'm Frank Wiley. In that time period, police say dozens of Instagram messages were exchanged between Curry and the baby's mother. 10 Tampa Bay's Malik Rankin has been following this investigation. And Malik, today the chief said the baby's injuries and the story they got are not lining up. That's right. The 23-month-old who died, his name is Ezekiel Koto St. Floor. Today, the Lakeland police chief told us Bobby Curry Jr. told investigators the child was injured because a puppy jumped up on him, pushing him backwards. Those injuries no, do not match lot. up with the medical examiner's findings. The injuries were not consistent with an injury or a fall, and the cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma and the manner of death was determined by the medical examiner to be a homicide. Lakeland Police Chief Sam Taylor says 20-year-old Curry Jr. was watching the child on March 5th while the child's mom was at work. He uh, either used something or uh, pushed the child, did something to the child to cause injuries to the front top portion to the extent that he had uh, some fatal injuries to the top of his Hit. Three days later, little Ezekiel did not survive his injuries. Police say after the child was hurt, he was put to bed. He stated that he placed Ezekiel in his bed so that he could rest. He said at that time, Ezekiel was barely breathing and he did not call 911. After exchanging 67 Instagram messages with Ezekiel's mother over two hours, Curry conveyed the grim details about Ezekiel's grave condition. Police say the mom finally asked Curry to call 911 but the damage was already done. And the medical professionals estimated that Ezekiel was without oxygen for at least 45 minutes and suffered a brain bleed. Now Curry, the mother's boyfriend, is facing first-degree homicide and aggravated abuse charges. Chief Taylor tells us the mom is not facing charges right now and is cooperating in the investigation. Look, I don't care what she's cooperating in. I think she needs to face charges, okay? So I want to throw that out there. I am an advocate for I think the mother should be facing charges, all right? Now, I want y'all to take a look at this. I made this uh, shorter because he's going to give some details in here. So instead of this being 14 minutes, I've cut this down to about seven minutes. Uh, show those Instagram messages. I don't actually have them. Oh, I wish I did. But it really, so just, the, you know what? I'm not going to say it doesn't matter. I would actually love to see him, to be honest with you. But I think we can kind of understand how this was going. He just, they just kept asking, just saying a bunch of stupid mess back and forth. Just a bunch of nonsense. So that is interesting though. So maybe if I get the transcript, maybe we'll we'll go over it one day. But actually, that's actually a good idea. We might have to go over that. So anyway, let's let's listen at this. He's going to give more details. Uh, on so I made this really short, a lot easier to digest. I'm going to give you an overview, and then I'll give you a timeline of uh, the events as we know them today. Obviously, I always tell you this. Things may change. This is what we know as of today. Mom so needs to be charged. This is the best information that we have. On uh, Tuesday, March 5th, at about 5.25 in the afternoon, uh, Lake and Police Department responded to a residence off of Cath uh, Kansas Avenue for a report of an unresponsive child. Officers arrived to find a 23-month-old that was not responsive and not breathing. The 23-month-old's name is Ezekiel Cotto with a C-C-O-T-T-O, St. Fleur, S-A-I-N-T-F-L-E-U-R without a pulse and lying on the bathroom floor. Officers performed CPR on little Ezekiel until the fire department arrived and assumed the life-saving measures. Little Ezekiel was transported to the Lakeland Regional Health 
and then on to Tampa General Hospital with critical injuries. On March 8th at 5.03 in the afternoon, little Ezekiel succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced deceased at Lakeland, or correction, Tampa General Hospital. Here's the timeline that we know of a course of events that led up to little Ezekiel's death. The adult that was present with Ezekiel at the time was the defendant in this case, Bobby Curry Jr., age 20. Bobby lived at the residence with Ezekiel's mom. As I said, this was in on Kansas Avenue. Pretty sure that was her residence. Mr. Curry, Bobby Curry Jr. is 20 years old. He's been charged with first degree murder, aggravated and aggravated child abuse. Curry was alone with Ezekiel babysitting while his, the mother of the child was working. Curry and the mother and, and Ezekiel's mom have been in a relationship for approximately four months and have been living together for approximately two weeks. Curry is not Ezekiel's biological father. So in two weeks, not even a full 14 days, he murdered your child. Continue to keep telling y'all that these men don't see these as babies. They don't see them as human. They see these kids, not all, but a lot of them see these kids as the last man that you just had sex with. They see that image of that child and that's what they see. They become enraged. They become jealous. They feel no tie. They don't care. And that's exactly how he treated this kid, how he probably would have treated the baby dad. You know what I just thought about that? That's probably what the mentality is. They treat these little kids and they abuse them like this because they're intending to treat them mentally like they're trying to treat the baby dad. Curry's account to detectives on the night that we responded was that sometime between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. he gave little Ezekiel a bath because he had urinated in his bed. While getting Ezekiel out of the bath, their puppy that they have uh, in, in the, uh, the uh, duplex there leaped upon Ezekiel causing Ezekiel to fall backwards hitting the back of his head on the bathtub and then the floor mat on the floor. Just for reference, the puppy's about 15 to 20 pounds and it is a puppy. Curry said Ezekiel tensed up after the fall, but was still breathing. He stated that he placed Ezekiel in his bed so that he could rest. He said at that time, Ezekiel was barely breathing, and he did not call 911. Curry said he returned about 3.13 in the afternoon to check on Ezekiel again, and at that time, he was not breathing at all. Curry put Ezekiel on, back onto the bathroom floor, which is tile, and gave him chest compressions and some air. He said Ezekiel then began taking breaths and was gasping. Still, Curry did not call 911. Curry messaged Ezekiel's mother who was at work at approximately 3.20 p.m. describing Ezekiel's severe physical difficulties and asking her in an Instagram message, is it possible for a child to go into cardiac arrest? Between 4.53 p.m. and 5.24 p.m., Curry and Ezekiel's mother messaged each other further. They continue exchanging Instagram messages, still not calling 911. Curry conveyed the grim details about Ezekiel's grave condition, and at 5.24, Ezekiel's mom told Curry, call 911, and he finally did. Between 2.55 p.m. and 5.25 p.m., that's about two and a half hours, Curry and Ezekiel's mom exchanged 67 messages on Instagram. Damn. About 119 minutes, which is about two hours, elapsed from the first signs of distress until Curry finally decided to notify and call 911. As previously stated, Ezekiel succumbed to his injuries on March 8th at Tampa General Hospital. I think she stated Keep in mind, this incident started on March 5th. 
Curry's account of how Ezekiel received his injuries were not consistent with the severity of the physical injuries that we observed. We spoke to the medical doctors that treated Ezekiel at Lakeland Regional Health and at Tampa General Hospital. They conferred with the... And God just made me think about something else. Here's another reason why I think the mother should be charged. For all of, because you just can't be that level of dumb. That's also another one of our phrases, our catchphrases here at the AFC. You can't be this level of dumb to not understand that you wasted all these, all, all of this time, not with phone calls or with text messages. They were Instagram messages, which you may or may not see pop up on your phone. You have to open up the app, stop what you're doing at work, and then read the app, respond, and then go back to what you're doing. Wasted all that time when that two and a half hours could have saved your child's life. How is she not also culpable? Shouldn't the mom be held liable and culpable just as much as the boyfriend for allowing that much time to pass, which allow for this child to further die? Wasting time. Makes me wonder if mom may have wanted to have this happen on purpose. She's just like, hmm, you know what? If I waste enough time, maybe he won't survive. I'm sorry. I know mom ain't going to like that, but it's just a thought. State attorney's office and the medical professionals estimated that Ezekiel was without oxygen for at least 45 minutes and suffered a brain bleed. The findings of the, of the physicians as well with the child protection team at Tampa General Hospital were that the injuries to Ezekiel were consistent with physical abuse. On March 11th, the medical examiner performed Ezekiel's autopsy and found that Ezekiel's injuries to be inconsistent with the statement that Curry gave that the puppy knocked him over backwards. The injuries were not consistent with an injury or a fall and the cause of death was determined to be blunt force trauma and the manner of death was determined by the medical examiner to be a homicide. After reviewing the findings of the medical professionals and in consultation with the state attorney's office, an arrest warrant was obtained for Curry on Friday, charging him with first degree murder and aggravated child abuse. Curry was- Y'all know that first degree murder signifies intent. He intended to kill this child. That's first degree murder. Premeditated. Was arrested this past Friday, March 15th, at about 7.07 .07 in the evening and was transported to the county jail. I'll tell you that the detectives have worked uh, hard on the case. Um, they've been involved um, from the very beginning when we went out there. Officers performed CPR on little Ezekiel at the time, but it uh, is unconscionable and unfathomable to me that uh, almost two and a half hours could go by from the very first signs that Ezekiel was injured until uh, uh, Mr. Curry had finally decided to, to notify 911. Uh Granted, I know that this, this little boy of a man was frustrated, but I think the thing that got him a first degree murder charge, which is what this man just touched on, is because you allowed that much time to go by and you were that careless. That's a lot of texting in two hours. Come on, tell me. That's facts. That is big facts. I think... That's what made this a first degree murder charge rather than something like manslaughter or second degree. That, that, you just can't be that level of dumb. I think that's what got him a first degree murder charge. Um, so we were, uh, we were very concerned about that. We had to, to get some opinions of the medical professionals before we were able to, to, to push the charges through. We weren't sure if Ezekiel was going to make it or not. And then he died three days later. But we knew that he was in very, great, very, very grave three condition. Three days later. Um, so it was, it was a very, uh, it was a very traumatic injuries. And I can tell you that the, uh, the, the accounts that have been related to me on the injuries that uh, Ezekiel suffered were in no shape, way, or form um, consistent with the, the video the that he, uh, yep. that uh, he walked us through and showed us how the injuries occurred. That did not happen. His injuries, his fatal injuries occurred to the front of his head. And based on the way he said he fell, um, all of the injuries were on the back of his head. He did have some small bruising on the back of his head, but they were just bruises, nothing more. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have.
And that's where we'll cut it because they ended up asking a lot of questions, like eight minutes more of questions and answers. But nonetheless, I think you guys get a good synopsis as to the tragedy that really occurred here. First of all, mom's bad choices. Let's just talk about the fact that the mom has a child in this situation. And how old is Ezekiel? He's what, two, three years old? Let me make sure. 23 months, just under two years old. So think about the fact that she just had this child less than two years ago. That means that she just last produced a child with another man less than 24 months ago. And she's already on to a new penis donor. In less than 24 months, you have ended a relationship with the biological father for a choice like this. And that's what I'm saying. Like the fact that we can produce children by people so willy nilly, we have no connection, no tie, no feeling, no emotion that you could just simply just take your kid and be like, all right, well, we moving over here. All right, we moving over here as if you're putting on another pair of shoes. Like it just don't mean anything and it don't have no real no real time consequences. And that's just not the way it works. The reason I continue to speak on these stories more than anything, I know a lot of people just like, like, why does Jay sound like this? Why does Jay go off like this? Because I'm a concerned father, that's why. And I'm going to give my daughter's mom a huge shout out because we just talked earlier this week about a situation that involved my daughter and some decisions she wanted to make and some things we had to make a choice on and we had to take a stance on something. So to my daughter's mom, if you're listening out there, I'll probably send her the link to this video so she could see it and just know that I gave her a shout out, a big shout out. Because me and her still to this day, even though my daughter is in her late teenage years, she's pretty much a young woman now. And we still come together and make decisions together with regard to what's best for my daughter. Not what's best for me, not what's best for her mama, but what's best for my daughter and her life and her future. And we work together to make that happen. Not only are we going to continue to stand on business when it comes to my daughter, my littlest daughter, which some of y'all are familiar with, that I also take care of, with, which is my daughter's um, baby sister. We're going to stand on business when it comes to her, too. We're going to continue to raise these ladies so that they can grow up and become something great and produce something better than what we were able to give them. And that's the way you're supposed to do. When you raise children, you give them an opportunity to grow up and become something great or greater than what you had and what they had. Raise that generation up, give them a leg up, and hope that they can stand up and become something great. It's so much wrong with this story and and so much more that I want to say. And maybe one of these days, I think I'm going to just let loose. I think I'm going to just unloosen my tie. I'm going to put the tank top on. And I'm going to just go in one of these days and I'm going to really, really, really tell y'all what I think with most of these stories, especially stuff like this, because this is really only scratching the surface. OK, but to Ezekiel, first of all, look at his eyes. That is a bright young baby who could have done absolutely nothing wrong and nothing to ever deserve a fate like this. When you look, let me see if I can get to this baby's face again. Right here. This baby could have grown up to become anything. And I give a shout out to the mother for one thing and one thing only. She gave this baby a name that means something. Your name is the most important thing that you can have in this world. And if you have a name, if you're blessed to have a name that means something, then I think that's just awesome. Okay. So I love this baby's name. Young Prince R.I.P. to mom's boyfriend. Why do we need him in our society? He wasn't going to be nothing. And I think prison is the perfect place for the rest of his life. That's the perfect place for him to be. So that way he can't reproduce or be around nobody else's kids. But mom, I'm not done with you. 
Not done with you at all. I cannot wait till we see you in court, okay? And facing charges for 67 messages, two and a half hours, didn't leave work, and decided your boyfriend would be a better babysitter than even your baby's father, let alone a proper babysitter. That's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. And we're going to continue to go in because that's why they call us the AFC, because we're going to put children first and we're going to advocate for children first. Put your feelings in your back pocket. If you don't care about kids, this ain't the place for you. All right. Thank you.